Hello Python students. In this tutorial, we will see how to write Python codes for some common examples based on real-time applications using if, else and else if conditions. Let's look at this first problem statement. Find whether the given number is even or odd. In addition to that, some test cases are given. We are supposed to execute our Python code using this given set of inputs and check whether we are getting the expected output or not. Now let's open a Python editor and try to write Python code which checks whether the given number is even or odd. As it says the given number which means we have to accept some number from the user in order to do so we write one function called input. This particular message which says enter a number will be displayed when we execute this particular python code. Now this input can be of any data type but as we can see here in order to find even or odd we require an integer. In order to convert entered input into integer, we have to write one function called int. Now this particular line will accept the number from user and convert it to integer. But for further processing, we should store this number into some variable. Now we have to check whether the given number is even or odd. As we know any number which is divisible by 2 is an even number. We will use this particular property to find whether the entered number is even or odd. If num mod 2 is equal equal to 0. This particular line uses a modulo operator which returns remainder after division. If the remainder is 0 that means number is exactly divisible by 2 which means the number is even. Then the next part is for odd numbers. If this particular if condition fails then the number is odd. Hence we have to write that in a else now let's try to execute this particular program using the given set of inputs. Enter a number. First input is 4. Even. That is the expected output. Let's try the next input. 5 which is odd. 0 which is an even number. Minus 7 is also odd. And minus 10 is even. All the given test cases matches exactly with the outputs what we are getting through our python code which indicates that our python code is correct. Now let's move on to next problem statement. Find whether the given number ends with 0 or 5 or any other number. This is little bit more trickier than the previous question. Here we have to check what is the last digit in the given number whether it's 0, 5 or any other number. Here also we can use that modulo operator to get the remainder. If we divide the given number by 10 then it will give us the remainder. Here also we have to accept a number from the user and it has to be an input. Hence, we will declare a one variable called num. Use int function for the input. This particular line will accept a number from user as an input. Now, we have to check the last digit of the entered number. 
the last digit of the given number will be 0 if it is divisible by 10 and 5 whereas the last digit will be 5 if it is divisible by only 5 hence we should start with that particular condition if num mod 5 is equal equal to 0 then we'll do something or else we have to say that number is from other category now if the number is divisible by 5 then we have to check whether the number is divisible by only 5 or also 10 in order to capture that we have to add one more if block which checks whether the number is divisible by 10 or not if number is divisible by 10 that means definitely the number ends with 0 hence we can print 0 otherwise we will print 5 now let's try to execute this particular code with the given test cases first input it's 20 we are getting the expected output let's try the next input 14 other 5 5 0 0 now let's try some negative numbers also minus 27 it falls in other category minus 10 gives 0 as all the given test cases are giving the expected output that means the written code is correct now let's move on to next problem statement find the grade of student based on the given marks from 0 to 100 the first table defines how these grades should be allotted a grade means greater than or equal to 90 b grade falls under greater than equal to 80 and less than 90 c grade greater than equal to 70 and less than 80 and so on for grades d and e whereas the second table represents the test cases now let's write the python code for this third problem statement marks is equal to int of input of enter marks now we have to check whether the enter marks are greater than equal to 90 or not if that's the case we will print grade as a let's write that in terms of if block if marks greater than equal to 90 then print a if that's not the case we have to check another condition which checks whether the marks are greater than equal to 80 and marks are less than 90 then print b similar if block we have to add for grade C, D and E. Marks greater than equal to 70 and marks less than 80. Then we will print grade c 
Now, as all the grades are written in terms of if blocks, let's try to execute the program using the given test cases. First input marks 95. Here we are getting an error which says name error, name marks is not defined. Now this is happening because we have made a typing mistake while using the variable name marks. Over here you can see even the line number is mentioned which is line number 6 which is this particular line. Let us correct the mistake and try to execute the code again. Marks 95 and the grade is A which is correct. Next 87 that is B. 70 it is C. 61 is D. 0 is E. 100 is A. 5 we are getting output as e but the expected output says invalid input now this is the place where we have missed something because as the problem statement says find the grade of student based on the given marks from 0 to 100 which means any number smaller than 0 or greater than 100 should be termed as invalid input now, in order to accommodate this particular condition where the marks should be entered in the range of 0 to 100, we should check all these if conditions currently available in the code only when the marks value is in between 0 to 100. That means, if marks greater than equal to 0, and marks less than equal to 100, then only we should execute all these conditions. Otherwise, we will print invalid input. Now let us try this modified python code with those test cases once again. Let us try to enter minus 5 again. Invalid input as expected. Let us try some higher number also. 110 again invalid input. Now all our conditions are correct. Now as all our test cases are giving us expected output which means now this code is correct. As I mentioned earlier in this tutorial we will see one more concept called else if. Let us try to introduce that else if concept with this particular problem statement. As you can see over here every condition inside first if block requires an AND operation of two different conditions. This particular thing is required to make sure all those students who are counted for A grade does not appear again in B grade. This particular thing can be achieved using a different kind of conditional statement called else if, where the second block gets executed only if first block does not satisfy the given condition. Let us try to convert this code using else if block. Else if, when we add that else if, this particular part becomes 
redundant hence it can be removed similar thing can be done over here and here as we have using this if else if else if we should convert the last code also as simply else now let's try to analyze this updated version of the python code it checks whether the marks greater than 90 if that's the case it will print a if not which is else if marks greater than equal to 80 when this particular condition gets executed which which itself means the marks are not greater than 90 hence we do not have to execute that additional part which we had earlier similar thing will happen when we execute this particular condition marks greater than equal to 70 gets executed only when the entered marks are less than 80 and so on at the end when whenever we reach to this else statement that means the entered marks are less than 60 hence we are simply printing e instead of checking any additional condition now let's try to execute the given code with all set of test cases first input 95 a grade 87 b 70 c 61 d 0 e Hundred A minus five invalid hundred and ten invalid. All test cases are successfully giving the expected output, which means the code is correct. This transition from previous Python code to this updated python code simplifies the condition checks for each if block three additional conditions we have removed and this particular thing optimizes the entire code now let's move on to next problem statement problem 4 convert the given flow chart into a python code now this is a different kind of a problem statement here instead of test cases a sample flow chart is given and we have to convert this flow chart into its equivalent python code all those yellow blocks represent that we have to print the given statement whereas we have those three if conditions where we have to take some decision based on the values which means we have to accept a user input for time and those two price if blocks whenever we get that time input from the user we also have to determine whether or the entered time by the user is considered to be longer or shorter as the words longer and shorter are relative terms we also have to ask user what exactly the word longer signifies over here because for one person longer may, may have a different value whereas for different user it will have a different value hence it's better to keep that as a variable and accept that as well from the user similar thing is required for price if condition where the prices 
higher and lower has to be accepted from the user. Now let's try to write a Python code which represents this particular flowchart. Start first statement print travel from CTA to CT B. Next, we have to check whether the time is longer or shorter. In order to do that, first we have to accept the value of time. Time is equal to int input enter time. Once we have this time variables value accepted from user, we also have to set up the meaning of word longer and shorter. It can be done using another input which accepts the value for longer. If we know the meaning of longer, then we can simply derive the meaning of shorter from it. Hence, we do not have to accept the value against shorter. Now, let us try to set up that if block using these two variables. If time is greater than equal to longer, then we have to check a price. Once again, we have to accept user inputs for price and higher. Price is equal to int of input of enterprise. Higher is equal to int of input of define higher. Once we have these two input values defined, then we can set up that if block which checks whether to choose a train or a coach. If price is greater than equal to higher, then we will opt for train, else we will opt for coach. Similar thing we have to do for the right hand side part of the pseudocode which is the else part of the initial if condition we checked for the time. Else, again we will accept price and higher from the user based on the values of these two variables, we will decide to choose whether red eye flight or a daytime flight is a better option. If price is greater than equal to higher, print daytime flight else print red eye flight. After this, irrespective of execution of if side path or else side path, which means irrespective of time being longer or shorter and then prices being higher or lower, we will reach to CTB, which is indicated using that last print statement arrive CTB. Hence, we will print that statement outside both this particular if else blocks. As no test cases are given over here, we do not have to test this particular code against specific inputs. If we read the key points from the written Python code, it will exactly represent the given flowchart. Travel from CTA to B. If time is longer and price is higher, go for a train. If price is lower, go for coach. If time is shorter and price is higher, go for daytime flight. If price is shorter, go for red eye flight, irrespective of all this, arrive at CTB. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Happy learning.